Veterinary research has now identified insulin resistance as a serious condition that causes your horse's cells to become insensitive to insulin. When this happens, serious complications can result in laminitis. In the past, testing for IR has carried no standardization. Now with the assistance of human research, we have a manageable protocol to follow when scheduling and performing an IR draw. Well, what happened in the, in the beginning, we were having uh, many horses that were uh, laminitic and had problems and that were continually coming back with uh, normal insulins, which we knew that just couldn't be possible. Um, but it was just because there were no um, set steps for testing and when to test and how long afterwards. Uh, we, would get, we would get blood back from um, other practices around the country with these, these glucoses that were very, very low, which were not, that means the horse would, couldn't have been alive if they were that low. And it meant that these, these samples had been sitting in a, in a car or uh, had not been run for, for very, very many hours. And so we knew they were getting, we were getting a lot of false test results coming into us. And uh, so we realized, wait a minute, there must be a standard on how to work with this. Dr. Frank Riley of Equine Medical and Surgical Associates Incorporated in Pennsylvania explains the cost-effective protocol that begins with the period of fasting. Also, it was difficult to um, be able to compare horses from around the country, a horse in California to a horse in Connecticut, because the test uh, uh, had uh, too many variants. And so what they've determined is through, through uh, basically uh, copying human medicine and through the American College of Endocrinology, realizing that the fasting tests alone missed many cases due to uh, creating a false low glucose, false low insulin. So very large people, three and 400 pound people that were, you knew were insulin resistance were testing normal and they knew there was a problem. So then they decided to come up with a dynamic test and then through uh, the University of Tennessee and Virginia and Tufts uh, veterinary schools, they determined a way to test this for uh, horses so that we could have a real true test uh, that was repeatable, that was understandable and actually was less expensive for the owner because it only required one blood test. And so we'll, we'll go over the steps on how that's done. First of all, the horse throughout uh, the evening is uh, given hay uh, not the normal amount of hay to get through the evening uh, from 8 o'clock at night till 8 o'clock in the morning, but uh, slightly less so that he runs out of hay probably a little after midnight. And there'll be a small period of fasting. And then in the morning, the owner will take a dose syringe, much like this, a 60 cc uh, catheter tip dose syringe, and using light L-I-G-H-T Cairo syrup in a red label. Very simple at the grocery store in the uh, cooking section and they will squirt seven cc's per 100 pounds of horse body weight into the horse's mouth. So a, a, a thousand pound horse will be getting 70 cc's and a 500 pound horse would get 35 cc's. So it's easy to figure out how much to do. Horses in their mouth capacity, whether they're uh, smaller or large, really uh, after about 25 cc's, if you try to squirt more than that, it's gonna end up dribbling on the floor, whether it's water or care or syrup. So a, a thousand pound horse, I, I, would, I would recommend squirting 25 cc's, waiting uh, 30 seconds to 45 seconds. They love the taste, squirting another 25 cc's, waiting again and then the additional 20 cc's to get your, to your 70. So it's very simple tests. So in the morning before breakfast, you'll squirt this in the horse's mouth, say at eight o'clock in the morning, and then your veterinarian will come and pull blood on the horse uh, 60 to 75 minutes later. It's very simple. Understanding the types of tubes needed for an accurate test is very important. Your vet will use a purple top tube to test the insulin and ACTH at the same time, or plain red top tube to test insulin, glucose, and thyroid if needed. Dr. Riley also stresses that red tiger top tubes with gel at the bottom are not to be used. These tubes can create a false low hormone number by pulling hormone into the gel. Also, it's very imperative old tubes past their expiration date are not used. We need the tube filled completely. And you can see that this is a new tube so that the vacuum is pulling in a good amount of blood. And eventually it'll stop, like now. I'll disconnect. Now I'll do the purple top, 
First you do the red top, and then you'll do the purple top. And that will fill. And that will stop. Then, we'll take the tubes and we will slowly rotate them eight times. And that's taken care of. Now we'll take these blood tubes and we'll take them over to the centrifuge. To our red top, and then we have to balance it with another red top full of just water. Well, the centrifuge will rattle around, and we'll take our purple top, which are with us our plasma, which can test ACTH, and we can counterbalance it with another tube full of water, and we'll put it on there. Simple. And we just turn it on, and we'll let it spin for five minutes. So I've set it. For so now we're going to take out our red top tube, and the cells have been separated down, and this is our serum or the liquid part of the blood. We're just going to pop this off. Then we're going to take a syringe. We're going to suck up two cc's of serum right out. Okay. And then I have my two tubes, my two plastic topped. Put that back in there. Come back, get that later. We'll take our serum. I marked each one serum and plasma because you can't tell the difference from uh, from your eyes. They're both going to be just yellow liquids. And I'll fill it up, and then I'll put my screw top on, and that's ready to go in the refrigerator. Ready to go. Now I'll take the other syringe, and I'll get my purple tops. They're smaller tubes, so they kind of went down. That's the water. So I'll spin it around to the blood one. There's the blood. And again, the cells have been pushed down, and again it's a yellow liquid, but this time it's plasma. This will be able to test the ACTH and the insulin. It's a little less liquid because the tube's a little bit smaller. And now I'm going to take my plasma plastic tube, and these screw tops, plastic tubes your veterinarian can order from Fisher Scientific. It's very simple. Alright, and that's it. I'm all done. I'm going to put the, these both into a little plastic bag. Serum and plasma. They're ready to go. Sealed up. And then they will now go into a refrigerator that have ice packs in them. I'll put them in between a couple of the ice packs. And now I can put that back in my car. We're all done. Off and running down to the next call. And I'll put those bloods in the uh, freezer when they get back and then off they go to the lab. All done. Yearly insulin testing is recommended for the insulin resistant horse. By instituting this simple glucose response insulin resistant test, you will dramatically reduce the chances of an inaccurate reading and save the owner money.